Good afternoon. I'd like to call the Rules and Open Government Committee to order uh, for May 22, 2013. Uh, I believe we have one change under order of the day, and that is under open government, the appellant has uh, requested a deferral for this item. Correct. So it will be heard next week? We're, we're putting it on next week's okay. agenda. Do we need a motion? Motion, okay. motion to approve. Second. Okay. Do you have a motion? Uh, on that motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. And we didn't have anyone who wants to speak on that item, so. Uh, we will now review the City Council agenda for June 4th, 2013. Any change to page one? Just, just to note that the um, closed session will be starting again at 9 a.m. Okay, uh, page two or three. Four or five? Six or seven? Eight or nine? I'd like to request, I'd like to request a time certain on 3.6. Okay, we'll come back to that um, to see how long the agenda is. Uh, page 10 or 11? I believe that's it. Two. So we'll go back to uh, 4.6. 3.6. I'm sorry, 3.6. Um, any, any suggestions in terms of the time certain for this? Um, 3 o'clock looks like a safe time. Not before so 3. Not before, not before 3. three. Okay, so not before 3 for uh, the Silver Service Commission's 26. interview, right? Yes. And I don't believe we have any additions or amendments, so. Um, Motion to approve. Second. With time certain on item 3.6. Okay. Uh, Mr. Wall, you want to speak on this item? Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. On 2.5, the ordinance 29.254 with reference to fresh vegetables, once again, I raise a concern about possible bacteria contamination because of the unregulated food vendors in neighborhoods. I still think it's a good idea for people to grow their own food and maybe barter it with their neighbors or give it to their neighbors. But these, these business entities that come into neighbors, neighborhoods uh, with sometimes more than likely illegal aliens putting out this produce is something to be concerned about. On item 3.4, public nuisance, great job. This is overdue, but you did a good job. I want to thank you about it. 3.9, the living wage, I'm still in opposition to it because it's, uh, basically a variation of communism in my opinion. 4.2, the housing impact fee. This begins a slippery slope to the creation of an entitlement program for people that can't afford to live here. And also, this housing impact fee is predicated on the people that do own property that want to either refinance or sell their property and a portion of that money goes to, uh, to go into these housing programs, which I don't support. Item 5.1, uh, I'm full support of eradicating gangs. I don't believe in the love and kisses approach by gang prevention task force. I want that money reallocated to San Jose Police Department's violent crime enforcement team. And thank you so much. Thank you. We have a motion to approve the City Council agenda for June 4th. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. We have nothing under um, upcoming study session. I don't believe we have anything under legislative update today. Correct. And nothing under meeting schedules. We are now at the public record. Uh, Mr. Wall. Your Honor, um, as a member of the Treatment Plan Advisory Committee, you've been aware, uh, aware and made a, uh, aware of this uh, memo at the last uh, Treatment Plan Advisory Commission or committee meeting. Um, I tendered a lot of testimony over the several decades that I've been going to this committee. And it's not like I, I don't rather have a commanding knowledge of how the water pollution control plan operates with uh, specificities uh, due to their funding mechanisms and how they go about doing their business. I don't have fault with water pollution control itself. It's when water pollution control got nested in to the albatross known as the Environmental Services Department that I have problems with. And the, the, 
the message that is within the four corners of this memorandum uh, speaks for itself. Now, the interpretation problem with the administration with reference to operation and maintenance budgets and what they're required to do with reference to capital improvement program budgets, there's a real broad area that can be misused and abused. And it's my opinion, uh, over the past two decades or so, maintenance at the plant has been deferred with such a regularity that it's easier to incorporate the, the, the required maintenance under a CIP budget versus what it should have been done all along under operations and maintenance, which means the tributary agencies and the ratepayers itself are at a great disadvantage with this type of interpretation. So I think an audit or a report by the administration is due to facilitate uh, your ability to communicate this to the other uh, committee members. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get a motion? Please? Motion to note and file. Second. Okay. We have a motion to note and file. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Uh, under boards, commission, and, and committees, Item F2, uh, this is in addition to the uh, Neighborhood Services and Education Committee, an update on actions taken to prevent and end homelessness and to respond to homeless encampments. Approved. Second. Okay. Mr. Wall. This memorandum, <coughs> excuse me, is foundational to the creation of an entitlement program. The entitlement program, or the expansion or variation of an expansion of the housing department is ill-advised. This creates a virtual magnet, or magnetism, if you will, of people that cannot afford to live here to migrate to San Jose, claim they're homeless, and then the city of San Jose, through its various funding mechanisms, one previously discussed about the housing impact fee, to cut out Section 8 vouchers or other forms of housing with reference to the inclusionary housing ordinance to house these people in, let's say, my neighborhood. Well, my neighborhood watch patrols on the Guadalupe River is nothing short of legend. It's referenced by reports, photographs, memorandum, public speeches, and what have you. I don't want this element in my neighborhood on the river, and I certainly don't want it in my neighborhood at taxpayer expense. And so I would, with the greatest of vehemence, uh, only restricted by the decorum that does not allow me to use vituperative vulgarities to describe this whole program, I'd advise you to tread so lawfully, softly as to defer this for a future study and to really look at what you're doing. And if we have new strict legal requirements, are these not unfounded, unfunded mandates? And if they're unfunded mandates, then tell whoever wants to enforce these issues to stand in line, a long, intractable line. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion to approve the addition on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. We will now move down to uh, the rule committee reviews, recommendations, approvals, G2. Approval of District 1 Korean flag raising event as a CD sponsor special event. Um, I have a note here that Either the event will take place on August 15, or we're placing this on the uh, later yeah, date. The event will, the date of the event will move to August 15. Okay, so motion to approve the date change. Okay. Do we have no one who wants to speak <coughs> on this item. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. We will now move down to uh, G3. Um, this is. Revise the council's traffic calming policy for residential neighborhoods. Uh, number five six allows for, and we have a memo from Councilmember Licardo, uh, Councilmember Herrera, and who's the other one? And Councilmember um, Johnny Camus. Yeah. Councilmember Herrera, yeah, do you want to speak to the speak to our memo? Absolutely. Thank you, um, Vice Mayor. And I, and I see um, we have Hans Larson from uh, Transportation too, so if I could just um, kick, kick off the discussion here. So my colleagues and I are concerned about um, the fact that we really haven't had a traffic calming program for a number of years and the need for uh, doing something about some of the issues out in our residential neighborhoods with regard to um, slowing down traffic exists. And our thought is that if we could create 
a fast track process for some of these folks in the neighborhood to empower the neighborhoods to actually do, do something about it and, and solve some of these issues. And uh, funding um, that we're looking at is various types of funding, including voluntary contributions, um, grants, developer fees, construction conveyance tax, or other sources. So we have, um, we, we're looking to actually move this item uh, to the T&E committee uh, to have them look at it. And I'm sure staff will come back with their recommendations, but I'm hoping um, that, um, that uh, the uh, rules committee here will uh, support us in moving this forward uh, to T&E to see how we can advance this. And I, with that, I, I would make a motion to move this to T&E. Okay. Um, let me just ask a couple questions. Um, I, I really appreciate uh, Councilmember uh, Herrera's comments and, and would definitely support a d direction. Um, Hans, I just wanted to know, I mean, just looking at the memo, I'm not really sure uh, if this is a big deal or a small deal, how much um, staff time do we need to sort of figure this out? Is um, moving this to the t and &E committee sort of the, the right way to go, or, sh or should we bring this back to the rules committee once we get um, sort of a brief analysis give st staff the appropriate time to do the analysis and come back to the Rules Committee and give us a report before we take further direction. Um, to Madam Chair, members of the committee, I'm Hans Larson, Director of Transportation. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to comment on this. Um, so first, uh, I very much you know, appreciate the, the, the spirit in which this is taken forward. We clearly recognize that with the budget cuts from 2010, we do not have a, a neighborhood uh, traffic calming program and recognize that there's certainly a, a need and interest in having that. Um, what we would recommend to staff is uh, give us the opportunity to go back and look at this, work with other uh, members of the administration. Um, so we ask a referral back to staff. We'll come back to the Rules Committee with sort of an evaluation on how we can best address this, looking at uh, workload assessment, um, but generally the issue, uh, I think my, my orientation is I think we can find some ways that many of these things we can deal with in a streamlined manner from an administrative perspective, and there may be a few issues we need to address from a policy perspective, but we would provide our insights on that back to the Rules Committee and then look at a direction. I wanted to just also bring up another potential is that we've received a lot of interest from various council offices in neighborhood traffic calming programs and the potential that the city may make some investments in this area. And so we think it's important to look at this issue in the context of uh, any investments that may come through the, the budget process, which is really just, you know, in front of us in the next couple of weeks. And so with that perspective, we can better address, you know, are we looking at a program really for next fiscal year that has some public funding elements, or is it all a, a program in which uh, we would, you know, encourage a private investment, voluntary contributions. So uh, again, we very much would look forward to working on this and streamlining the process and getting these services out into the community and I'd like to just you know come back with our analysis on the topic um, as soon as we can. Hold on. Um, Hans, I, I appreciate that. Um, when do you anticipate coming back to the rules uh, committee? So I think what we do is uh, so with uh, the budget process and the mayor's message once sort of it, it's kind of been determined the council direction and you know, really would, uh, transpires in June, that we would come back soon thereafter looking at this uh, in that context. So it's, uh, I'm not up on sort of the dates that we have, but certainly like the, you know, the July, August time frame, um, whenever we can schedule to come back. I don't think there's a lot here that's gonna take us a lot of time to look at this. Um, so we can turn around something for the Rules Committee in a uh, short order. Mm -hmm. and, and I appreciate that. I, I think that um, I, I would support that direction, uh, given the fact that I, I, I also believe that we'll probably see uh, various components of this memo probably coming out of the various budget documents from various council members. Obviously, speed bumps uh, are definitely one of the things that are always requested uh, from the residents in my district. So that's why I'm very supportive of this. And in terms of sort of fast tracking certain things, um, I think I, I agree with Hans that maybe there are certain components in this memo that we can actually fast track that by doing administratively rather than bring it to the full council. So if, uh, you know, of course, 
Cause remember Rosa Rara would, you know, <laughs> it's, it's her memo, so I, I would love to hear um, more from her, but I, I think um, what Hans has um, sort of introduced is something that I, I would like uh, the rules committed to consider. No, a absolutely. Um, I, my concern is, however we do this, I want it to be a fast process in getting to the fast track because uh, we're already seeing, when, when, th when this came up, this has been bubbling up, I think, from a number of council offices, and it's come out in t and &E committee. Sam's talked about it, I've talked about it. And unfortunately, while we're in the middle of talking about it, we've had another pedestrian death out there. And you know, if we can create a process whereby we save one life of a child out there, uh, the, I, I think it's worth it to move this along. So I don't want it to get caught up in bureaucracy uh, while we're sitting here you know, taking our time, figuring it out. I want, there is a need, I want to move this quickly. Um, and we had talked about T&E committee, so if, you're, if it's coming back to rules, uh, then where does it go from there? How can we get this implemented in the most quick fashion that we can? And uh, the parts that I think that can be handled right away are some of those where people do have other funding mechanisms. So I've also put forward a budget document, as others have, so this is a, a need that's being recognized across the city. So again, I'm, I'm supportive of, I want to work with transportation but I want to move this forward. I, d I don't want it stalled in some bureaucratic, lengthy bureaucratic process that we don't, doesn't see the light of day. And uh, it sounds like August is going to be the soonest we can because we don't meet in July. So um, I I I'll support that and I'll, I'll add that to my motion that it comes back to rules, but let's move this forward quickly. Is that okay with the second? Yeah, yes. Second okay, great. Uh, okay. Yeah, Councilman uh, Oliverio. Uh, hands, I just wanted to understand for the family of the, the, the family where this uh, child uh, was, uh, uh, killed. Um, was there actually a petition for speed bumps on that street? We have, uh, we, we've looked at our files. I mean, there has been some history of um, analysis in terms of speeding in that street, and we concur that it, it is one of the locations where there's been a history of adverse conditions. Uh, in checking with our staff, uh, we didn't have anything in our files where we had received in our office a request um, for speed bumps. Okay, I just wanna make sure that's accurate. And then, um, yeah, I, I certainly would, uh, uh, I'm a fan of anything that would help make cars uh, drive slower. Um, and we've seen the difficulty of this issue citywide. And even at the most traffic calming place I know of, Santana Row, you still have people that are, you know, uh, don't, uh, don't accept the norms of society and drive in an unsafe manner. And I, I know this uh, makes reference to, um, uh, I guess I'm gonna make a comment that it, it incurs something about that I would agree that a physical object uh, will slow down a car versus any law through lack of enforcement, uh, people will speed. And uh, you know, you can, we can lower the speed limit in front of a, a senior center or a, a school, but if there's no uh, enforcement, then that's difficult. I know that in looking at the information uh, on the t &E report about 15 mile per hour, it actually has positively affected in the capacity that people aren't going over 25, <laughs> which is the uh, speed limit it was before. So that's actually good in itself because some areas you had a posted speed of 25 and people were going 30 and 34, et cetera. So I think that's important. But uh, I, I do agree that physical things in the road uh, are the ones that really make the effect because, you know, we eliminated lanes on certain streets and I constantly see cars driving in those bike lanes because there's no physical thing to stop them there. So, uh, but I would be interested. And then in prior conversations, um, I have been told that wanting a speed bump requires a traffic study that's required by state law. So I wanted to clarify, is it the state that requires that, or is it just us? That's been unclear to me because I've been told state numerous times. Yeah, generally, I mean, the kind of the state law it comes into effect primarily for um, setting speed limits. So that that's primarily we've come into that. I think the traffic calming policy that was is updated by council in I think 2008 um, did. Um, uh, address the issue, are we putting our traffic calming resources in the most effective location? And one way to determine that is to set a standard of what are adverse conditions in which traffic calming measures would be warranted, whether it's speed bumps or chokers or other means. And so that was set within the policy. 
And to be able to determine whether a request or location meets that test, it, it's a very simple study that um, costs roughly around $300 to basically just do a quick check, what's the speed, what's the volume, and so we can ascertain whether you know, it's a, it's a request you know, we, that we should do something about, or if it's just, you know, we have a lot of people that feel every street in San Jose warrants some traffic calming. And so I think one of the efficiencies that, you know, we can get and was really defined by the updated policy is having some, some simple to determine criteria on separating the serious requests from the others that are perhaps a lower priority. And so I think, you know, that, I mean, that was brought up as part of the, the memo to the Rules Committee, and I think that's something that we want to specifically address on, you know, what's cost effective uh, and what's streamlined in terms of getting to, I think, the outcome that we all want is, is safer residential streets. So, so the traffic, so the traffic study is not well. It's not required. It's not, not required by state law, okay. but uh, the current policy right. does uh, designate uh, the need to determine whether there's been a, there's an adverse condition that we should do something about, and it's a it's a it's a very simple, low cost study to be able to to determine that. Okay, so your explanation of low cost study is not what I've heard for the last few years, that it's an, something that's rather expensive. So I'll say that that's sort of new. And But I think where you're going is is that a street may want something, traffic calming, and you want to do the study, which you're saying is nominal, it's not a lot of money. And then if it meets a threshold, so for example, it's a 25 mile per hour street, and if the speed is X, then that you want to have some level of consistency in the city that says it qualifies, meaning if the speeding, if this average speed is 30, uh, it qualifies. But if the average speed is 26, it may not. Is that where you're sort of going as a policy to manage it? Yes, and, and I think that's within the council adopted policy that we have today. So I think what we'll, you know, as we come back on this, sort of define, sort of revisit what was in the policy, what were the reasons for doing it, and what's the best way to go forward. I, I might add, you know, I think that there's the memo does indicate. Uh, their sort of a historic concern over speed bumps in particular um, from a public safety perspective. Um, I talked with the fire chief today uh, and there's references in here. I think that there's a say a more progressive view on that issue and looking at, at balancing safety in neighborhoods from a traffic perspective uh, with the important safety issues of, of good response times. And so I think that there's, uh, you know, we'll come back with that information when uh, we report back to the Rules Committee. And, and then on the topic back again on specifically the schools, what we're allowed to do by state law, if a, a school, I know that today they can have a, basically a letter from the principal requesting the lower speed limit. What's the process there as far as the traffic study there? Is there or is there not a traffic study? For the lower speed limit? Yeah. Um, I think, you know, under state law with the 15 mile an hour, as long as it meets a certain criteria, we've got the, the discretion to be able to implement that. So, so essentially we, we can do that without a traffic study if it's on a 30 mile per hour or less road, two lanes, et cetera. Yeah, I'd have to, it's been a while since we looked at that, but I, I mean, it's a pretty straightforward process to request 15 the, the mile real, an hour. The only cost then is the signs and staff, DOT staff, right. managing where the signs should go based on the uh, p existing infrastructure, i.e. there's a pole to go on or putting in a new pole. That's really the cost on that item. That's correct. Sort of what's the proper layout consistent with state law, where the signs would go, the advance signs, establishing the start of the zone, the end of the zone, and so there's some engineering work associated with the proper layout, but uh, those costs are fairly nominal. And then, so your, so the memo says no traffic studies, uh, and you're, su you're suggesting that it might be, a, if, again, if I'm putting words in your mouth, you let me know, that it may be a good idea because you want to have some baseline of because without traffic studies, that means any street could get it regardless if there's an adverse condition. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, I think uh, we need to kind of think through this. So I'm just giving you, you sure. know, some initial thoughts here and, and we'll provide our perspectives on that. But I, I think where we want to get to is, is the most efficient, streamlined way to be able to 
accommodate these kinds of improvements, but do it in a way that if there are, you know, limits on resources, particularly if there's public investment that goes into this, that we're providing um, the, the improvements at, at the highest priority locations and certainly locations that are warranted. And so we think that there's, you know, some benefit to, you know, some modest amount of data analysis to make sure that we're doing the right thing in our community. Okay. And then um, I think, you know, the idea of self-funding, which we already have in the policy, which allows mm -hmm. for it, I, I think it's important to have that because uh, these are fairly uh, major things that go in the roadway, and uh, it helps to create that cohesiveness of the street. Because I find once you ask someone to put in a dollar, then some of the uh, some of the, <laughs> the enthusiasm goes away, and as, as you, and also that where you actually place uh, the hump or bump also become well not in front of my house. You know, we had the issue on Hamilton Way where we put those in, and then the property owners requested they got pulled out. And part of it was the noise, and part of it was the pure disrespect of certain drivers who at each speed bump would lay on their horn the entire time. And uh, that was just really sad to see because, you know, these people were uh, being, you know, uh, frankly mean to the people that live there. But I think that's an important component because I think you need some unity on the street that they, this is a decision that they all agree on. We've, uh, I've been fortunate enough to do it on a street in my district. Uh, I think it's the only street it's been done on in about six years. But in that case, I will tell you, we had really strong, um, you know, strong agreement that that was the right thing to do. And I would definitely would be supportive of streets that want it, that have the adverse condition. In that case, it did. And that also uh, have some unity. And I think also for maybe um, areas that don't have the uh, economic ability, perhaps, then I think, you know, you know, I, I've been happy to self-fund self some uh, DOT pro traffic calming projects out of my office budget, and I think council offices and community can meet halfway on that if uh, we if we get if there is no money in the budget. But it sounds like with the proposals, there could actually be something. So, um, with long story short, yeah, I look forward to this coming back in uh, August and to see uh, what we could do in this regard. Okay, Councilmember Hodora. Yeah, I'm assuming that's as soon as it can happen, but. Uh, Again, thank you very much for your thoughts, um, um, Pierre Luigi. Because uh, you know you're actually dealing with and, ha and having gone through the process of getting them installed, I'm sure there, I'm sure there will be uh, you know things, bumps in the road, no pun intended, that <laughs> that will that will encounter as we move forward. But I, I think the one message out here is to convey some respect for our community, because they live at, they live in these streets. And when you have a lot of people on one street saying they really want it, as in the case you had in your district, sometimes there's wisdom in that community. And when you can bring them together, whether it's a self-funding situation, I think there is ability through CNC funds, through our own office funds, through other mechanisms to get it funded. Or in the case where a neighborhood can't afford it, I think that, uh, that then we need to look at you know at the general fund. And I think, Hans, you brought that you brought that to my attention when we discussed this. We don't want this to be only for neighborhoods that that are, are that are wealthy neighborhoods or that have lots of you know ability to do that we want to be able to offer this throughout the community but it does need to be where the neighbors and the folks on the street agree that there is some strong agreement i totally agree with Pierre luigi because you don't want to put them in there and have people wanting them taken out so there has to be some strong agreement but this gives another method to empower and i do want to look at the fast track as much as we can because i know you just talked about three hundred dollars but if we're talking about staff and adding staff to this those are not $300 decisions. Those are $135,000 decisions or more. So it is more money than we're talking about in terms of $300. But we can discuss that when it comes back, and I look forward to working with you on it. I appreciate my colleagues supporting me on this. And Councilmember Herrera, I would just say that I think it's also on the level of, you know, self-funding proves that there is a actual want and desire for a community that's uh, flat broke. Um, it, then it might require that everyone agrees, not not, mm -hmm. you know, 18 out of 20, but 20 out of 20 agree if, you know, if we're going to spend. But that's a level of minutia that maybe DOT can bring back. And, of course, the council will shape, I'm sure, through a memo signed by five council members or something like that. So Yeah, well, you know, we want to save some lives here, and I think this is an important step forward. Okay. All right, we have some uh, members of the public who wants to speak on this item. Uh, David Wall. First, the issue of bike lanes. When's a bike lane a bike lane? <clears throat> when there's bikes in it, but if there's no bikes in it, cars are going to use them as they should. I've uh, my neighborhood. I na live near a park, and they, you know, they've had this speed bump issue before. 
For the record, I do not want a speed bump in front of my house. Uh, there are problems speeding. I've routinely offered the San Jose Police Department's motor unit to sit in my lot with their radar guns and pick off these speeders. But what we don't have talk about increasing the bail schedule of speeding in a residential neighborhood, let's say starting at $1,000 for first time offense, and or seizing the vehicle, the offending vehicle for a month or more, which would add economic incentive uh, to our tow truck uh, companies that the council has basically screwed over the years. Um, the self-funding business, how are you going to, under the law, make it equivalent for people to pay? I'm not going to pay. I don't want to pay for it, okay? Uh, other people will say, hey, this is unwarranted intrusion, government intrusion, making us pay. How are you going to collect? Parcel taxes? Now, it's true that you should discuss some form of traffic mitigation in neighborhoods. San Jose Police Department's motor unit, for example, the other day, this week, um, I believe it was uh, Tuesday or, or Monday, I forget, I'm getting old. They're down there in front of Columbus Park, more colloquially named as Camp Chuck Sam, uh, picking off people with the radar camp, uh, guns coming over the t West Taylor over 87, which is a known speed trap, and they could do that. But they need tools that deter. A little speeding ticket for $250, 500 bucks is nothing. Most, some people don't even pay it. Some people are uninsured. You start seizing their vehicles and making it known throughout the city you could lose your vehicle and pay the impound fee for a month or more, that grabs your attention. Thank you, Mr. Wall. Richard McCoy? Good afternoon, uh, Madam Mayor and uh, Council Members. Uh, fast tracking the uh, traffic uh, control here I think is a great idea. Uh, I know in our own neighborhood over in West San Jose about three years ago, uh, our uh, neighborhood committee got together. We had a uh, report done, a study, and uh, I don't understand the lower cost because they came out and they put the strips across four streets and took data for several days, and uh, the data did not warrant traffic control, but the citizens really felt it was necessary. So we took it to the council and got a couple stop signs installed, and they worked. They have controlled the traffic. Uh, council member, uh, uh, Oliverio's comments about the speed bumps, I was going to say myself, so you said it, everything for me. The idea that any group that has enough money can put speed bumps in concerns me. Does that mean we're going to have a, a city full of speed bumps? How fast you go over these speed bumps? If you have one in your street, you have to go over four or five times a day. How much is that going to cost you later on in the year to get your front end realigned and so forth? So speed bumps are good in the right place, but I don't think they'll answer everything. Uh, another, like I said, the traffic control we had in our neighborhood was stop signs did a great job and it didn't hurt the, or make the neighbors complain or honk their horn every time they came up to a speed bump. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jeff Badola. Um, I signed neutral on it, which I think was pretty good because I feel no. <laughs> um, now, three points. Although people, uh, residents don't own the city streets that they happen to live on. That's a consideration. And although um, these kinds of mitigation efforts don't get to the root of the thing. And I try always to go around uh, a known uh, speed bump like at uh, Trader Joe's. I'll always take the back way. Um, and also, although um, alternatives need to be considered before action is taken, the measure twice cut once principle. So. Uh, a hurried decision can be regretted later. But all, it, with all those, all those, such a, it might be good to institute such a body, um, uh, but without teeth yet. That's what I'm thinking. Because it is good, like Mr. Wall said, for s citizens to consider issues like this in an, in an open public way. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Oliveira. Hands. An arterial street, what's the lowest speed limit it would have? 15. Right, most, most of our arterials are, you know, 35, 40 miles an hour. Okay. And there's probably a few that we have that are 25 mile an hour streets. And a connector? 
So connector is like a neighborhood collector street. Uh, typically, those are 25 miles an hour, some maybe 30. And, and when you come back to rules, could you touch on that topic? Because, for example, you could have a residential street that connects with 16 other streets. And uh, there's a difference about putting speed bumps on a collector slash arterial than a, a true more neighborhood street. And look, do you concur with that or am I off base on that one? Yeah, I think there's a difference in what we call a neighborhood collector and, and sort of a pure neighborhood local street. Okay, I, I think that's important because uh, th that's just it connects so many other streets. There's no other way to go but to go down that street and the, uh, whether that's, uh, I think there's, that should be treated or looked at in a different way. And if that's okay with the uh, motion, yeah, that's fine. We're, we're focused, we're trying to focus this on res true residential right. 25 mile an hour streets here. Yeah, and I, and I was just. Certainly not intent, and so that's fine to add that to Yeah, because I just said there's, there's 25 mile per streets that connect all these, and I just think uh, be aware of that. Thanks. Okay. Great. Anything else? Okay. We have a motion to refer this item to staff and um, went back to the Rules Committee in August. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you, Hans. Okay, we'll move down to item H. We have nothing under uh, additions to the council committee agendas. Uh, nothing under open government. Open forum, Mr. Wall. I'm here to uh, give a report, but first of all, I wanna give thanks to the office city manager for promptly responding to uh, some fire hazards that I've mentioned on the, basically what it's, for lack of a better words, it's the hillside that supports the Market Street overpass, which is city property. There's a series, I think, seven palm trees that were planted who knows how many years ago and for what reason. These palm trees are, are quite huge and their canopies are, are basically a fire hazard waiting to become a fire danger. And I would like to thank that the uh, Chief of the Fire Department and Battalion Chief uh, Johnny Mend uh, Dellinger, Chief McDonald, came out and looked at the property uh, and saw my concerns. I can no longer hop over the chain link fence to pick up the dead palm fronds. I just can't do it anymore. I just put a ladder on one side, a ladder on the other, and, but my artificial hip and knee is too much. And last year I was incapacitated, so we have a lot of dead palm fronds. It could be up to two, three feet. And because of the angle of the slope of this embankment is 60 degrees, the palm trees are vertical, approximately the trunk is 25 feet or so tall, and then the canopy adds another eight to 10 feet. But the palm fronds touch the grass. So if the grass catches fire, the canopies catch fire. And if the canopies catch fire, that fire plume could add another 20, 30 feet of flame. And if you have wind, you could take out well, my sector of the neighborhood and possibly Fox Avenue with a fair amount of ease. And so I pass this out. I, this is a, a company that came by. I didn't meet the guy. I don't endorse him. It's just an idea how the city could make money because I classify palm trees in a group of trees that are basically rats with roots. I mean, these things require yearly maintenance. For example, over by St. James Park, those palm trees are so high that the Thank you, Mr. Wall, your time's off, up. They can kill you or paralyze you. Jeff Bedola. Hi again. I titled my little card uh, Adjustment for a Prior Action. Um, should traffic access be restored? Um, this is relevant for rules because it involves ethics. I've been thinking, I've been tracking developments in the College Park neighborhood of District 6 involving Bellarmine. It seems to me these developments show evidence of having been unduly influenced by special interest. I don't know whether any law was broken, but I think the red flag of the appearance of impropriety was raised. Instead of my saying why, it's better merely calling attention to it. I request that the question of restoring pedestrian access on that portion of Emory Street sold to Bellman be considered. I think the restriction on Bellman parents driving up to the front of the school should be reviewed too. I know this is a mouthful, um, but I, I had to say it. All right, thank you. 
Thank you. That concludes the open forum. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Good job.